Okay, we're going to talk about the Moodle quiz today. And here on my screen, you will see an icon. It says formative assessment. This is, um, I'm a student logged into a Moodle course. And when you see this icon with a little check mark, that is a quiz. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I want to show you what it looks like for a student. This is a five question quiz. And it shows the number of attempts, right? When you go in, it shows the title of the quiz, formative assessment. It also shows what time the quiz opens and closes, and attempt the quiz now is a button I can press. Now you don't have to set an open and close date, but in this case it has one. So I'm going to click attempt the quiz now. Now it gives a little dialog box that says you're only allowed one attempt. Do you really wish to proceed? I'm going to say yes, start the attempt. Now this quiz I've designed, okay, here's the first question says, you know, if you've not yet answered it, you can flag the question if you want, but um, what year did the iPad debut? And so I know what year that is. That was 2010. I'll put that in and say next. Okay, question two. Pumbaa was the Lion King. Is that true or false? I think Pumbaa was, I don't know, he was a warthog or something. So we'll say that's false and we'll say next. Okay, the next question has an image. It says, until recently, this arch in Zion's National Park was considered the world's largest. It actually should be Zion National Park. So here they are, the Crawford Arch, the Jobs Head Arch, the Hoodoo Arch, the Hidden Arch, and the Kolob Arch. And actually, all through the 20th century, people thought it was the Kolob Arch. Kind of interesting, it's not even in Arches National Park, which is also Utah. But anyway, that's just some trivia for you. Okay, this next question is an essay question. Why did the New York Giants win the Super Bowl in 2012? Answer in less than 100 words. So I can click and just write. and we'll say next. Okay, this next question is a question that has um, multiple choice. So if I go into um, Hyundai, we have to match the manufacturer with the product. I have to find the car that I would choose. So I'll just get these. I think Hyundai is the, let's see, it's not the Elantra. Toyota. That's the Corolla. Nissan is the Maxima. Chevy, the Camaro. They won one of those last night in the Super Bowl. You can tell when I'm making this video now. Uh, Honda Civic and the Ford Focus. And then that's the last question. And so I'll go ahead and say next. So it takes me to this summary screen, and the summary screen shows the name of it, formative assessment, the summary of the attempt. It says my answer was saved in all of them. I only have 12 seconds left. I better submit this. I better do it quick to get into the deadline. I did it. Okay, and it gives me a summary. Um, it says the quiz closed on Monday, 6th of February, 2012, and that's today. Um, I completed it right under the deadline, right at 1040, and no more attempts are allowed. It gives me a button to go back to the course. So you just saw a quiz there. One interesting thing about that quiz is that it was random. Uh, in other words, I wrote the questions, but every student that takes it, their answers, if it's multiple choice, will be mixed up, and their questions will be in a different order. And so um, that is the quiz from the student's perspective. What I'd now like to do is go to the teacher's perspective and I'll go into a different browser just to show you that. And I can show you some of the settings that went into creating this quiz. Okay, I am now logged in as the teacher and I want to go into the settings. Um, over on the left you'll see when, you, when you're in the quiz assignment, which I already clicked on it in my course, 
On the left, you'll see Quiz Administration, and you have some different options. You could edit the quiz, and that would mean adding some questions and things. Um, you could do things like preview it. A lot of these we won't really mess with. One thing that's nice is if you really like your quiz, you can back up your quiz, and then you can put it in other courses. And I'll be doing that um, later, although I'm not sure if I'll include that in this video or not. Well, let's go into the edit the settings of the quiz, though, so you can see what settings led to that quiz we took. Okay, and here we are in the settings, and it's a rather lengthy screen. I'll scroll down just so you can see how much we're going to go through, and this will take a few minutes. So, up at the top, um, you can see you name your quiz, you give some instructions or an introduction. Um, as we go down, here is where I had the quiz only open for a short time. I had it open from 9.30 to 10.40 um, on one particular day. And you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I can uncheck that if I wanted, and then that quiz would always be there. Um, it can be kind of nice, though, just to enable it for a short window of time, especially if it's some kind of a summative assessment. If it's just a formative assessment like this one, then you could probably leave it open as much as you wanted because um, you want students to be able to just kind of get a f some feedback on how they're doing. Uh, there is a time limit here. You can see that we could enable that if we wanted. Um, we could give them only 10 minutes if we wanted for the quiz. Um, I will uncheck that, though. You can decide how many attempts you want to give them. Um, we said one attempt here. You can put it in a category in your gradebook if you've set up categories. Here's where we get the, um, the shuffling randomly. Um, and this, this mixes up the questions so that every user who takes it will get a different... Um, a different numbering of the questions and so you could also make it so it's as it's shown on the edit screen I chose a new page for every question I, I like to do that because I really like to focus students on one question at a time um, but you can choose to have many more questions um, that's up to you you can also choose to shuffle answers within a question. I chose yes, so if it's a multiple choice question, every student will get, you know, A, B, C, D will be different for them. Um, and I don't really change this questions behaving type thing. So, okay, I'm gonna... Okay, this next section review options, this controls what a student sees while they're taking the quiz. So you could make it so that during the quiz they can actually see whether their answer is correct or not. They can see the feedback. They can see the right answer. Um, immediately after the attempt is right when they're done. Within that moment when they submit it, again, the same choices. So you could let them, right after the quiz, see which one was right or wrong. And if this was a formative assessment, like, like I said, um, then, then yeah, you would probably want to check this. You'd want them to see the, the attempt, whether it's correct or not, um, any marks or specific feedback, and you can put that in the quiz as you're making the questions if you want general feedback. You can see the right answer, and you can see overall feedback. So I can make it so right after the attempt they can see that. Later while the quiz is open, that means um, immediately after the attempt, is within the first two minutes. Later while the quiz is open is two minutes after they they take that quiz um, they'll be able to see these things and so I will go ahead and check those as well. Uh, before I do that though after the quiz is closed you know our quiz in this example ended at 1040 a.m. so at that point you want students to be able to see and they'll be able to see if you have the grade book enabled their grade and they'll be able to click and see the right answer and everything and so you usually for sure want to have this stuff checked. Um, if you never close this quiz though, um, they'll never get to see that. So you really want to think about these things. I'm going to go ahead and check all these since it's a formative assessment. If you were just doing a summative assessment, I would probably only work in this area right over here um, if it was a summative assessment because you don't want them to see the answers until later or contact friends or anything. So, Here's some things about the user's picture and things. I, I don't usually mess with that. 
Um, you can even password protect different attempts on the quiz and enforce a certain amount of time to go by uh, for delay so that maybe they would do some studying before they go in there. That's, that's all up to you. Um, and then the last thing, you can set the, gr the overall feedback. You can put a grade boundary in. So, so I have from 90% to 100% is an A. From 80% up to 90% is a B, and so on. Um, and so you can go ahead and put your grade system if you want in. And then the bottom is 0%. <coughs> you can also set up groups. So the quiz could be taken in groups if you wanted. I should clarify, it doesn't let them take the quiz in groups, but it allows that group to all have the same quiz because there are some types of questions where um, it randomly picks questions from your question, uh, if you set up a question bank, and so that group would all get the same quiz. Um, but it's not that they could take it together, so it's a little different than what you might think of as a group assignment in the class. Um, I also have set up completion tracking, and that's um, those little check boxes where students can see how far they are in your course. So I made this one only to be shown as complete when the two conditions I have checked are met. The student must view the activity and the student must receive a grade. And I can expect completion on the 6th of February because I set this quiz up to be open and closed right on that date. So uh, once you've um, gone through all these settings, uh, you can see there's a lot to think about when you're giving a quiz. And these are things we're just used to as a teacher. But I'm going to click Save and Display here. Okay, so here I can see um, I'm in as a teacher. So why don't we look quickly at the attempts? I had a couple practice students do that. Um, so it says attempts and it's blue. That means it's a link. I will click that. And we'll take a look at what those attempts were. So I can see right here um, three students tried this. And I can review their attempt. Um, shows the time they took it, it shows how long they spent on it, it shows whether or not they got questions right or wrong, um, some of the essay questions, so you can see if it's incorrect or correct. Um, question number five, I'm sorry, question number five is the essay question. Um, now, the students saw these questions all in different order, but this one says requires grading. So if I look, um, this was a 100-point quiz because I left it at the default. So it made every question exactly equal. So if I wanted to take a look at um, that question, I could. And, and that's not the purpose of this um, video right now, but just to show you that if it's an essay question, you need to end up grading it manually before they get their final grade. OK, the last thing I want to show you quickly is I'm back in as the student. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on this formative assessment. And I'll show you what the student sees after the quiz has closed. What they get is a screen like this that says summary of all your previous attempts. It, tells, um, it also gives you a button to review that. So if I want to click on review, I will be taken to a screen where I can go through question by question and I can go ahead and see. So my answer has a green check. That means 2010. That's good. So the correct answer is 2010. And I could go through each question like this. But So basically, the student would be able to see all of their questions. And there's even some options like show all the questions on one page. And here's what I would see then. You'd see question one. Anywhere you see green, you got it correct. I can see I got green all through. And then they don't actually show me um, an answer on this question for the essay question um, because it hasn't been graded by the teacher yet. So that is, in a nutshell, um, what a quiz looks like to a student and an intro to the settings for a teacher when they're creating a quiz.